Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hamsa, and if you're studying for the MCAT and wondering how can I improve my chem phys section score, then trust me, you've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to be telling you about how I went from my chem phys section being the worst section on my MCAT to scoring a 128 plus on the actual exam. Now before we get into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I'm going to be doing this for each section of the MCAT, so you don't want to miss out on those if you want to hit your target score for the actual MCAT exam. Alright, now that I'm done ranting about that, let's actually get into the video. How can you score a 128 plus on the chem phys section on the MCAT? Alright, so my first tip is regarding prep courses. Should you take a prep course? Well, as someone that has taken a prep course myself, I can tell you that it might be helpful for content review, but it's not going to solely get you to the score that you want to get yourself to because the MCAT tests more than just your knowledge. It tests your ability to apply your knowledge to situations that might be unknown to you or might be new to you. So I'm going to be telling you guys a bunch of free resources for content review that you can use to self-pace your own studying, as well as some of the paid resources that I use for practice. And those are just a must. So make sure you budget some money for that. Okay, for my second tip, which is on content review. So recently, I know that a lot of the topics have been categorized as either being high yield, medium yield, or low yield material. And based on that, a lot of students start to structure their exam prep based on you know how much of a chance that that topic is going to come up on their actual exam. So please, please, please do not underestimate the low yield material because recently, the low yield material is actually what's being tested more commonly on the exam because, you know, as a lot of more pre-meds become more knowledgeable, that's the only way that they can really differentiate between candidates. So take organic chemistry, for example. It's a subject that's tested on the chem phys section. And although it might be considered low yield because it's only around 6% of your entire exam, it's actually been getting increasingly tested on recent exams. So don't look over those low yield topics, guys. Okay. Okay, so now let's get into the resources that I used for content review for this section. So firstly, I used Pre-Med HQ, their YouTube channel for my physics review. Now they have so many videos breaking down all of the equations that you need to that you need to memorize. And they give you mnemonics and things like that to help you remember the equations so that you don't just have to memorize all the 500 equations that you need to know for this test. And if you don't have time to watch the videos, I'm actually gonna be linking in the description my notes that I took after watching the videos. And I have all the equations and some little mnemonics to help you study. So make sure you go check that out if you don't have time to watch the videos. Now for Gen Chem and Orgo review, I watched the med school coach playlist for those respective subjects so they have an entire playlist for basically every single section on the MCAT so honestly watch all of them but for chem phys I specifically took notes and watched all the videos on the orgo and the gen chem playlist but you know orgo was just not my thing so outside of the med school coach videos I actually watched science simplified their YouTube channel and he really broke down the orgo mechanisms and reactions so well and gives you real examples and just walks you through all of the steps and does a ton of problems on you know SN1, SN2 reactions. So make sure you go check that out as well. So those are all the videos that I watch for content review. So now let's talk a little bit about the most important part of your study routine, which is practice questions. You know, even after a traditional student going the traditional route, taking all of my prereqs before even sitting for this exam, including biology, organic chemistry, and general chemistry, I still struggled with the MCAT. And I soon realized that the test is not just testing your ability to memorize the content and, you know, your science knowledge. It's testing your ability to apply it to situations that you've never seen before but it was one platform and one platform only that helped me combat this. And this was 
UWorld. So I actually use UWorld for all of the subjects on the MCAT and I found that specifically for you know physics and general chemistry where there's a lot of math and balancing equations, that sort of stuff, it really helped me get down the content and memorize the equations that I need to memorize as well as apply them to these new situations. So actually after my content review, I started using UWorld immediately because hot take, Anki just did not work for me. I found it boring in a way and also it was just testing my ability to remember the flashcard rather than actually remember the content. So I used UWorld for active recall and what I started doing is after my content review, I literally created blocks of 15 questions and I would do the 15 questions and put it on tutor mode. So what it would do is right after I solved the question, it would give me the answer immediately and I could fix my thinking and thought process in that moment. So I created blocks of these 15 questions and I did four of them per day, specifically for chemistry and physics. And I found that this really helped me much more with active recall and I was able to consolidate my knowledge and learn new things just by doing practice questions. However, UWorld is a subscription, so you have to pay for it monthly, I think, and it can get quite expensive. So what you can do is you can actually kind of get some friends who also want to purchase UWorld and you can just create a joint account and share, you know, the practice questions and share the account in general. So you can split the cost between each other. I know a lot of people that did that. I personally just used my own account because I just needed to practice every question that I could. But, you know, that's also an option if you're willing to look that route. Now going off of that, let's talk about the golden resource that you just have to use. I don't care if you don't buy UWorld or whatever, you have to get this resource. And it is the AAMC practice material. Now I really recommend doing every single practice question from them because they are the test makers. So they know exactly what they're doing when they phrase these questions. And the patterns you see there are the same patterns that are gonna show up on your actual exam. So make sure, you know, for the chem phys section specifically if you're doing your section banks your flashcards anything that the AMC gives you okay so those are the tips that I had for you guys to get a 128 plus on your chem phys section let me know in the comments if you've used these resources and if they work for you or if you have any questions in general while you're studying for this exam I know it can be tough and you know if you get to the exam room and you open your chem phys section and you look at a question and you're like what the heck is this? Just know that literally every other person in that room is definitely gonna be feeling the same feeling. So don't let that deter you or give you anxiety or stress you out. Understand that everyone is gonna be thinking the same thing for that question and move on and just Take a chill pill, guys. All right, well, I hope that this video helped you guys. If it did, make sure you subscribe so um, you don't miss my other videos that I'll be coming out with. And I wish you guys good luck on this journey and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.